During World War II, the United States government accredited nearly 140 women war correspondents. Choosing to be in the middle of violent uh, confrontation that involves mud and weaponry and blood, that's not where women are supposed to be. When I was reflecting on the three women um, that are featured here in this, um, I, I, I would hazard a guess that most people in this room would have heard of their male counterparts. Wire service reporter Ruth Cowan, 42 years old. Magazine reporter Martha Gellhorn, 36 years old. Photographer Dickie Chappelle, 25 years old. They opened the door, they have taken their machetes and cut down the, the tall grass that was in the field and allowed other women to uh, come into the field. Women were not allowed anywhere near the battlefield. They were not allowed to cover press briefings at all. And the women who did so did it at the risk of losing accreditation or being sent home or even possibly being court-martialed. World War II was uh, what, what was called a total war, right? There was a complete mobilization of the civilian populace and, and there were opportunities that were generated by that mobilization. There were individual women who had the education and had the wherewithal and had the courage to take advantage and to push those opportunities. Gellhorn felt it was her responsibility to report on civilians. But she also believed in the professional imperative that a real war reporter is an eyewitness. Missy, you've had a long list of places that you've been deployed to, and I'm curious to know what sort of spoke to you in this film. Where did you feel like, oh, I see myself in these journalists? It definitely underscores um, the sense of how lucky I am to be a reporter um, today rather than during World War II. <laughs> When Ruth Cowan arrives in North Africa, she considers herself to be a professional correspondent for the world's largest and most important news gathering organization. She probably says to herself, I'm here, get me in the game, let me help. Wes Gallagher was her new boss and the West Africa Bureau chief for the AP. He shuns her, he won't talk to her. He forbids her from using the facilities to file stories. We certainly don't face the sort of institutional challenges that somebody did at that point from their own news organizations and from the military. But that said, I think that there's, it's still, you know, in, in many places, um, still largely a man's game. I have to imagine that when you started, there were not a lot of women who were with you. Uh, what was that like? And did you feel that you had this certain responsibility? When I first came in the Navy, you'll laugh at this, um, but um, women who got pregnant could not stay in the service. And the law, prohibited men, oh, women from going to the front lines. At the same time, during World War II, uh, we had women on the front lines all the time. The Ruth Cowan subject for the Associated Press is anti-aircraft defense. She's an example of how the American women correspondents are reporting the war. One of the um, journalists said, just let me do my job. And when that, when that is allowed, and then we are responsible to what that job is. I think it's a pretty, pretty, pretty uh, electric thing. It was interesting to see in the film, Michelle, the, the, the social situation where they tried to put the genie back in the bottle. Uh, you know, the women had these jobs, men were coming back, and everyone was expected to just go back to the way things were. The three women, having pushed themselves in the boundaries of the war story, found a surprise back home. Editors roll back the gender changes that have taken place in wartime. And they oftentimes do it quite crudely. I mean, they will take a very skilled woman journalist and put her back on the woman's page. They cut the field down and then it grew back. And then somebody else had to cut the field down and then it grew back. You have the opportunity to prove yourself as a professional, not as a woman, but as a professional. And, and there's a lot of opportunity to do that. And I think that that has over time, I think that's changed America. Uh, and it's been an amazing thing, and it's an amazing thing to be a part of. There's no question about it. There's only one other species on Earth for whom a war zone is no place, and that's men. But as long as men continue to fight wars, why, I think observers of both sexes will be sent out to see what happens. <laughs>